Are you concerned about leaky pipes when you're out of the house or on vacation? Well, with this water valve shutoff and some strategically placed sensors, you can quickly and easily give your home automation system the ability to safely shut off your water in an emergency. In today's video, I'll show you one such valve, how to install and set it up in Home Assistant. Let's take a look. So this year during Black Friday, I was browsing slick deals and found a good deal on this dome Z-Wave water shutoff valve from the smartest house. So I decided to pick it up and make a video about it. I've had water leak sensors in my house for quite a long time, but all they've really done is alert me in the case of a water leak behind my sink or behind my washing machine. Uh, but I'd like to actually be able to do something with that information. So this was a perfect match. So when we travel, it's nice to know that in the event that one of those sensors goes off, that this will actually shut off our main water valve. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. So one of the nice things about the dome is it seems to have quite a bit of uh, instructions, not only just, you know, not much in the box itself, but quite a bit actually online. And they have a great support team that'll help you out for whatever you need. All right. So one of the things, first things you'll notice about it is that it is actually mains powered or AC powered. So you will need to actually have power within about two feet of the shutoff valve yourself. So make sure before you buy this, that it's in an area that's actually convenient to get power ran to the shutoff valve. Um, so the shutoff valve itself consists of uh, this mechanism here with, a, it's got a strong motor that can actually uh, actuate and turn off a ball valve. One of the things you wanna make sure of is that you go to the website and verify that you have the right type of quarter turn ball valve because this isn't compatible with some different older types of valve. So before you buy it, go ahead and make sure you have the right type of valve. Um, that quarter turn valve will actually be placed here in this little clamp area. Uh, it has these nice little four adjustable screws that way you can, you can uh, set it where it's nice and snug. Uh, then this section actually mounts to your pipe um, my piping is actually PEX or plastic because uh, I have a newer house, but this will work with copper and other forms of pipe. Uh, mine, you'll see in a minute, mine's a little bit of an odd uh, installation because of a piece of rebar. So to secure it to the pipe, it comes with these adjustable pipe clamps. So you just feed those through these two holes here and tighten them down with either a Phillips head or a hex head and until you get it nice and snug on the pipe itself. Um, the first thing I wanna point out is there's this little ring, release ring here that kinda lets you adjust the starting point from where the valve actually uh, begins to open from. It's also handy once you get it mounted to actually pull this and make sure that you have the angle correct on this uh, because obviously if you have um, this valve too far down, too far up, it's gonna bind and not actually open the valve all the way. So that's a good way of trying it. One thing I will warn you about it, and it does say explicitly in the instructions, is that you pair this device to a C-Wave hub, it will actually actuate this arm. So be very careful, keep your hands away from there. It says right here on the instructions. Um, so the first time you pair this to your home assistant or smart things, make sure you keep your hands clear of the actual actuator here because that could probably hurt you pretty bad or break a finger if you're not careful. The first thing we're gonna do is get this paired to Home Assistant and test it before we get it mounted. Of course, one of the things that you need to remember is that this does require a Z-Wave hub. It says a certified Z-Wave hub and they have a whole list of the compatible hubs on their website, but um, open, I'll be using Open Z-Wave as part of Home Assistant. Use it with something like SmartThings or Vera. All right, so I've gone ahead and um, plugged in the, the shutoff valve. Uh, you'll notice that the blue light is blinking, indicating that it is in inclusion repairing mode. So you notice the blue light's blinking. Go ahead and press the inclusion button three times while keeping my hand away from the actual actuation arm. Okay. So I'm gonna go over here to my Z-Wave, to, to my Home Assistant instance, scroll down from configuration to Z-Wave, and then add a node secure. So we'll do that and then triple tap again. Oop, actually didn't need to. The light's now solid blue, indicating that it's been paired to my Z-Stick. So once it shows up in Home Assistant, we'll test it before we install it. Yep, and there it is. Alexa Consumer Products Incorporated Dome Water Shutoff Valve. Brilliant. So now we'll go ahead and look at some node information. 
Uh, it's still in dynamic, so it hasn't 100% finished setting itself up yet, but we can go ahead and play with it a little bit. You can see all the extended stats and all of the neighbors that it has. I have quite a large Z-Wave network. Um, so I'll go to Entities in this node, and we'll see that it shows up as a switch. Um, I always like to set the polling and intensity to at least one. That way it'll pull about every, I think, 30 seconds or so, just in case this gets out of phase. So I'll refresh the entity. It's usually good enough. All right, entity information. So it's in the on position. There it goes. So I just switched it off. Now it's closing the valve. All right, now it's in the off position. It shows up as off in home assistant. So let's go ahead and turn it back on again to make sure it's working. Okay. Instantaneous, just like we would expect. All right. So it looks like everything's working. So now we'll move over to the water valve and get it installed. All right, so like I said, here's my master water shutoff valve. Again, it's got this piece of rebar here to hold the PEX piping in place. So we'll have to do a little work to get this ready. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is take the, the two pipe clamps that they provided us and go ahead and open them up all the way so we need to slip them around the outside. Look at this nice 10 in one screwdriver that actually has a, a hex bit that typically fits these. Take the two included pipe clamps and we'll go ahead and open them up all the way so we can fit them on onto the pipe. Since I am using PEX, I'm not gonna tighten it down too much because I don't wanna damage the PEX pipe. So now you'll see pipe clamps open. We can go and just run that around the outside of this for now. So then we'll take our valve that I already have plugged in and connected and we will run pipe clamps through here. So we should get them in the same direction so that way it's easier for you to tighten them down. I always wanna have the nuts on the outside so they're easier to get to. If they're on the inside facing the hot water heater, it'd be much harder to get this to install. Keep this cord out of the way. All right, so let's... Get the two pipe clamps around and just to get started, we'll get we'll go ahead and tighten these down. This will be a little tricky because I'm do this one-handed, but just feed the, the tail back in to the pipe clamp and then start tightening again. Before we get this tightened all the way down, let's make sure it aligns properly with our valve. So we want to make sure the pivot point on this um, actuator is lined up with the pivot point on our valve. So it's a little high, so let's go ahead and Move it down a tiny bit. Again, I've got this silly piece of rebar in the way, which I really hope doesn't interfere with it. There it goes. So there you go. As a successful actuation, obviously it's gonna slip off now because I don't have it tightened in here. But now this is why I need to tighten all these extra screws down. So let's get everything snug and we'll run it a couple more times to make sure Everything looks good. So again, I don't really recommend doing your final tightening with a drill because you could damage the pecs if you tighten it too much and it could just end up snap, more than likely snapping off the pipe clamp. This nice and snug so it's parallel. Let's go, let's try it again. There it goes. All right, so now the water's off. Perfect. Well, it looks like it's installed correctly. I think with a little more adjustment, it should be nice and secure again. I have an odd setup because of this piece of rebar right here. So now we have our shutoff valve successfully installed. And now let's go see how we configure it in Home Assistant for some automations. All right, so Back in the Z-Wave configuration, uh, first thing I want to do is go ahead and change the name of this device as it's pretty large and it'll be hard to find in the system. So I'll go to Entity Information. You can, if you want to, you can give it a new name. I'm just going to call this one Main Water Shut Off. You can change the Entity ID as well if you'd like. Um, I prefer just to leave it as default because it's easier to find when you're looking for the device. All right, now that we've changed the name, the next step is we're gonna go ahead and add it to the 
interface. So I have a systems tab over here where I like to keep all of my uh, battery information, Z-Wave device information. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just add it to this dashboard. You see I have all my leak sensors listed here, uh, which they're all showing as dry. So I'll go ahead and configure UI, edit this, and then I already have the entity ID copied. So I'll just paste it in and select it, and now hit save. So now I can see the status of my main water shutoff here, and then obviously I can go in to it and activate it or deactivate it if necessary. So the final step is we'll go ahead and go over to Node-RED. Real quick, I'll take you through my Node-RED automation that will both notify me and also shut off my water valve in the event of a water leak. I do have a general version of this available on my website linked below. You'll need to import this into Node-RED and then make sure you update all the entity IDs and the home automation server. That way it's correct for your instance. So real fast, we'll go through, you'll see I have all five of my sensors listed out here. Each of these are just the individual entity IDs of each water leak sensor. Those move into a switch node. That switch node basically detects whether or not they are on or off. And again, because these are binary sensors, you need to make sure that you're using on and off as your payload, not dry or wet, because binary sensors always output on or off as their default status. And then the Home Assistant UI changes that to say dry or wet, depending on the type of device. After that, it passes through a change node that sets a flow level variable called friendly name to the data.attributes.friendly name. So what this does is when the sensor fires, it grabs its friendly name, which is the, the name you see in the UI, and stores it in a variable so we can reference it later. Then in my instance, I have a home state that it's checking. It's an input select that basically tells what state the house is in. Is it home, away, sleep, or vacation? So that status is checked by a switch node, and depending on which direction it goes, it sends a different output. So if that if I'm home, somebody's home, it'll do one thing, and then vacation away or sleep, it does another. In the event that I'm at home, it just sends me a notification message. It does not actuate the valve. If we are on vacation, away, or asleep, it additionally sends me the notification saying which water leak sensor is leaking, starts a five minute timer, and when that five minute timer expires, it turns off the water valve and sends me a separate notification telling me that the water to the house has been turned off. The reason for this five minute timer is just in case there's a false positive, we don't want the water shutting off every time one of the sensors um, blips. So it puts a five minute timer and then shuts off the water valve. If at any time the offending leak sensor goes to off, it will stop the timer and will not shut the valve. I use Telegram for my notifications. And so I have set up a change note here to reload the, that friendly name variable we talked about earlier back into the payload. Then it makes a new custom payload with this message containing emoji and the payload, which if you remember from the last step, that payload is now the friendly name of the entity that set off this whole chain of events. And then finally, my telegram node takes, since I'm passing it a payload, it ignores this message field since it's blank and it sends out the notification to my Telegram account. Again, this is available on my website and if you have any questions, feel free to put a comment in the video. Hopefully this video shows you some of the nice features of having a water main shutoff valve and encourages you to go ahead and buy one. They're not expensive and if you were to have a major water leak, it'll be a lot more than the $150 retail that these things go for. So if you do have a home automation system already in place and you'd like to expand that little bit of safety, I think this would be a, a good project to start with. Um, things to keep in mind though is to make sure that you, you check the website for the manufacturer to ensure that your main shutoff valve is compatible with one of these devices. There are other ones that you actually have to cut in and get a plumber. Um, I like these because you don't need to do that. So. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If it was to you, please feel free to subscribe to the channel um, 
and like it, of course. So please leave a comment below on what type of videos you'd like to see in the future. I've been getting a lot of requests from people to do some more basic videos, so I'll have a whole series on getting started with home automation. It'll be things like installing Hass.io, which is a Home Assistant version that can work on a Raspberry Pi, um, wiring in smart switches and other, other more fundamental type videos. So thank you for watching and have a great day.